Did you like this uh, drama? Yes. Did everyone follow it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure whether I could. <laughs> but the basic point I was uh, getting... <clears throat> Actually, I just arrived at Heathrow Airport. I'll keep you see. And uh, they just drove me here. And they said... Uh, Giri said, well, the super soul will tell me what to say. <laughs> so, uh, I'm sure Krishna will help me say something relevant. When I was in Delhi airport, I was lining up. I was wearing this hat. And uh, this lady, many, when I wear this hat, many people come up to me. And they ask me questions, they say, can I take a photograph? Do you mind if I take a photograph? And sometimes, you know, many people come round. There's many stories I have. It's a kind of icebreaker. But uh, even when I was in Dubai Airport, Terminal 3, a whole group of Iranian people came round asking about what are all these figures on the side and uh, so it, the idea is that to illustrate what we are talking about in this drama, The Promise, that uh, we're different from this body and here we see this is a verse from Bhagavad Gita, if you remember the hero of the drama we just saw, he found this Bhagavad Gita after that, after the, after the show, after the party, you know, and he, somehow or other he found a Bhagavad Gita. He really liked it. So this shows that how the, first we get a child's body in the mother's womb, and that's when he made his promise. He didn't want to forget his relationship with the Supreme, spiritual relationship. But then when he was born, see this little child here? This, this light is a symbol of the living entity, the, the eternal spiritual spark, part and parcel of the Supreme. The, the, uh, the wisdom scriptures of the world, they all say, Quran, Bible, you name it, I, I was just studying Bantu religion also. They also say that the individual is part and parcel of a supreme entity. You can call Allah Jehovah, Imana, Katanda in Africa, there's many names, Unkulunkulu, <coughs> Yahweh, Mazda. But we have one in quality but different in quantity. So we are qualitatively one with the Supreme or God, if you like, but we're different in, in what? Quantity. We're not the same potency. We don't have the same power. Just like samples. So this sample here, the tiny living entity, actually they, in the, it said, Nicho Nicho Nam Chaitanus Chaitananam Eko Bahanam Vidadati Kama, that's Sanskrit. It says, amongst all living beings, eternal living beings, there's one Supreme who's maintaining all the others, providing the light, providing the water, providing the earth, providing the food, providing the intelligence. In this way, and none of us are supreme. I mean, if we were supreme, we wouldn't have to 
you know, go to the bathroom. <laughs> we wouldn't get hungry. We wouldn't, uh, you know, get old, get diseases. If I was God, would I have to go to the dentist? Ah, dentist, please fix my teeth. Yeah. Somebody says he is God. You know, ask him, how many hairs on your head? Oh, I don't know. So, obviously we're not supreme. We're under the laws of material nature. So this shows how we're under the laws of material nature. It's one verse in Bhagavad Gita. Do we have a Bhagavad Gita? Someone like to read? Read it now. Chapter 2, text 13. No Bhagavad Gita. In my book bag, yeah? You can hold this hat. Okay. This is an interesting verse, actually, because it doesn't require blind acceptance. It's an example of how the Vedic knowledge is practical, and we can see for ourselves whether it's uh, true or not. It combines this revelation with experiment. Where in this material world, generally, we accept knowledge by experimentation, hypothesis and theory, practical and so on. Uh, or else we have to rely on revelation. We hear from our mother, this is your father. This is descending knowledge. Two kinds of knowledge, ascending knowledge and descending knowledge. Ascending knowledge means by experiment, by observation, uh, hypothesis and so on. Descending knowledge means revelation. We hear from our mother. Who is my father? This is your father. So we, we can't experiment about that. So this verse combines both. So um, our spiritual master Prabhupada emphasized this verse very much. It's very useful for us. You can repeat. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya This is an invocation for the spiritual energy. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya As the embodied soul Oh, this is a Sanskrit Dehino Sminyata Dehe Komaram Yovanam Jara Chachadi Hantara Praptir Dearest Tatranamuyati, as the embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. So that's very nice. You can see here the little baby's body growing up. Young child's body, young girl's body, young boy's body. And the light is the same. Actually, it's got a bit worn out. I've got to refurbish the lights. And here you see old age. Old age coming on. And then the soul leaving the body. So we are constant. Our consciousness is, is absolute. Our individuality is there. Just like when we dream at night. We have so many dreams, but we're still me. I'm still myself. I'm still conscious of being the dreamer. So in the daydream also, I'm dreaming uh, that I'm getting older. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting married. I'm going to school. I'm going to college. I'm getting older. I'm dying. Because we identify with this body. Just like when we watch the TV, the cricket match, or the Bollywood movie, the film, we identify with the hero, and we go through various feelings. This is called Maya, or illusion. Just like in the promise, we see he, he wanted to remember his relationship with the Supreme, but under the influence of so many things, Maya, illusion, we forget. So therefore we're thinking, I am British, I am female, I am male, I am cat, I am dog, I am tree, I am bird. So, yoga means, different forms of yoga means to awaken to our eternal identity. Who am I? What am I? 
That is this, what we're doing in this Hare Krishna movement. It's a movement for self-realization of human society. Because we are forgetting our relationship with this material nature, what is this material nature? Who does this nature belong to? We don't know how to function. There's so many problems in human society. So this is a, just a short summary of this drama, The Promise. The Promise ended with the living entity awakening to his eternal relationship with the Supreme. And uh, so I'd just like to open, see if there's any questions. I've got a few more minutes. Is there any questions that would like, anyone would like to ask about this topic? This is a, also a process of self-realization, bhakti yoga, shravanam kirtanam, uh, asking questions and hearing the answers. And this is a process of approaching uh, the spiritual realm. We have to hear from a higher authority. So I'm representing my spiritual master, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. His books you can see downstairs. If anyone has any questions, right now it's, you're welcome to ask. Questions. Any new, how many newcomers here today? Yeah? Oh, that's great. Any of the newcomers like to ask questions? There's a lot of in house wallers here. Hare Krishna devotees have come and they have their questions. Hi, who? How are you? Any questions? Oh, you got a question? What's your question? <laughs> What's this coming up? <laughs> the youngest question I've ever known. Say something. Um, um, I go to the Christmas and I go to the and I go to the balloon. Kathmandu, the swing. Anyone else want the swing? Yeah, that's great. Anyone else? This is a good question. I want to be known. Actually, I'm going to be known. I'm going to be known. I'm going to be known. This balloon, balloon of Maya, is carrying us lifetime after lifetime to birth and death. So we have to burst this balloon by chanting Hare Krishna. Okay, next question, please. <laughs> I think this was a good answer, Bashar. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. That was a good answer. Krishna Prasadam, food offer to Krishna, is the answer to many questions. Well, I have a question. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, we all know that we go through a process of reincarnation, right? What is a, for, I mean, I don't uh, find any reason in getting punished in the next life. Why not in the same life? Hmm. He doesn't see any reason for punishing in the next, next life. life. It's not fair. It's so actually, if you thought, this Bhagavad Gita is saying that there's not a next life. Life is continuous. It has no beginning, no end. But just like we change our clothes, Bhagavad Gita says, Vasamchi Jinani Yatavihai, just as we change our clothes and we put on new clothes, the same person, the same personality, 
is not dying. Nijayati Amrita, for the soul there is neither birth nor death to be heard in the drama. Nor having once been, does it ever cease to be. So this is the illusion that we're getting punished in the next life. But it's actually reasonable. Because even, you know, you go to college or school, and whatever you do at college, you get an MA, PhD, it'll go into the next life. You'll get a good job, again, you'll get plenty of money, a house, and so on. So it's a continuous. Uh, one's life from childhood to youth is continuous. One consciousness is continuous. So <coughs> this is called the law of karma. Action and reaction. I mean, I can't remember what happened in my previous life. No. What is the point of getting... Does that mean we didn't have one? There's many things we can't remember. I can't remember when I was, you know, in my mother's arms. My earliest memory, I tell the children that, was when I was, I went down the garden of my house in Birmingham, and my parents had a chicken run. They kept chicken. And I went and I climbed into the chicken run, and I sat on the rail with the chickens. And I thought, oh, this I thought these chickens are really nice people. They're better than the human beings. And then my parents said, Where is it? Where's Nikki? Where's Nikki? They were searching everywhere. They found me with the chickens. So that was my earliest memory. But I can't remember earlier than that. So how can I remember my previous life? You know, you can't remember what you were doing this time last week. Does that mean to say you weren't around last week? But your mother will tell you. You were doing so, your, or your father was, will tell you you were doing this last week, or your mother will tell you that you liked to do such and such when you were a baby. You see? So just by our ordinary memory, we can't remember everything, let alone our previous life. So we have, this example is very good though in Bhagavad Gita. We've changed our bodies so many times, but we're still the same. Why when we change our body, when, when we leave this body, you see a dead body, there's no consciousness, right? You can kick it, you can cut it, a dead body, it's not going to complain. Because there's no life, there's no consciousness. And everyone's crying and saying, he's gone, he's gone, my father is gone. So where did he go? It means that the living entity within that body, the spiritual, the spiritual atom, according to Bhagavad Gita, there's a spiritual atom of consciousness. When that leaves the body, the body is dead. So that change continues into the next life. And that's good actually. If we're making spiritual progress, Bhagavad Gita says, we can continue in the next life. Suchi nam srimatam gehe, yoga prashta prajayate. If we make just a little progress in yoga, we guarantee a human form of life in a good family, rich family, aristocratic family, knowledgeable family, so that we can pick up the spiritual progress where we left in the previous life. Say we make 2% two, two progress in self-realization. Next life, you'll pick up from that 2%, you can go further. There's no loss. Whereas in this material world, even if you gain the whole world, and you lose your spiritual consciousness, what is the gain? You may become an animal, fish, or bird, they take a fish body, a bird body. These are teachings of Bhagavad Gita. It's fascinating. And this is all happening by the subtle mind. It's the subtle mind. We have two bodies, gross body and the subtle body. So it's the subtle body which carries us into the next gross body. It's the software which determines what kind of hardware we're going to get in our next life. It's very interesting. Please read Bhagavad Gita. Rashila Prabhupada. I think all your answers will be there for your question. It's a nice question. Very nice question. Thank you very much. Any more questions, please? Am I doing for time? Am I doing for time? Gary? How much time have I got? Time up. Time up. Okay then. So just one time then. Let's say this Maha Mantra together. This mantra is designed to dissolve this uh, designation with this temporary body and mind, to awaken 
our original spiritual consciousness. So please repeat after me. Hare. Hare. Krishna. Krishna. Hare. Hare. He says many names of God. You can say Allah, Jehovah, you know, Namana, Katanda. We are following Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And uh, this process is very effective. It's, it's working all over the world. Krishna, Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hands up everyone, please. Let's get more effect. We take a deep breath. Hare, Hare! Hare, Hare! Pardon, I didn't catch that. My, after the plane ride, my ears are not good. A bit louder, please. Hare, Hare! Hare, Hare! Hare, Rama! Hare, Rama! Hare, Rama! Rama, Rama! Rama, Rama! Rama, Rama! Hare, Hare! Hare, Hare! Okay, thank you very much, everyone. We've got a very mad part of the show there.